grew up on maybe 20 acres of land, but it was shared between my, me, my family, my grandma, and my cousins. So we kind of all lived on it. And then next, you know, Landover was my cousins, and they owned a big dairy farm. So it was kind of like we just roamed hundreds of acres. That's how, you know, I got, we had access to all these animals and, you know, we, we killed what we ate. That's why we ate those sort of things. I don't know if it's a southern thing or if it's my family. <laughs> Five eight boar, wild boar. Uh, we used to eat deer, which is a pretty normal. Chitlins, which is pig guts. Pig intestines, if you want to say. Um, and we used to like uh, eating chicken feet, which there's kind of a little technique that you have to eat it. You boil it, or you can put it in a stew or whatever, just because you, you you have to make the t the feet the the meat tender enough. But um, it's only so much you can eat out of it, and you know it's like a three footed, you know, toad, whatever, and then right in the middle is where you would bite. That little pad is where you'd get the most meat. I mean, you can chew off the, the, the little toes, but you're not going to get much. You just get mostly skin. <clears throat> uh, we used to go f uh, frog gigging because we used to eat frog legs a lot. Those are greasy. Um, it's just kind of like the, like a couple vertebrae of the, uh, from the oxus. I don't want to say his butt. Back in the tail kind of joint together. That's the best. And I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they get that in parts. But that's some good meat right there. Pig's feet. It's just fat. It's just so good. Alligator meat is some of the best meat you'll ever eat. And rattlesnake. They... If I had to describe both of them, they both taste, it, it would put you in the mind of, both of them put you in the mind of like popcorn chicken because that's kind of how they prepare it, like battered and salt and pepper batter or whatever, but it, it is so much better than chicken. But it kind I guess it kind of grosses the thought of somebody thinking, oh, I'm eating a snake or I'm eating an alligator's tail, but if you was to look at it, the way it's cooked or whatever, you would never know. I used to eat dried fish, I don't know, raw fish, I don't know, just... <laughs> I ate the glue in kindergarten, first grade. It was just, it's kind of sweet and it's kind of got its own little taste. And I had it on my hand and it's the Elmer's white glue. It's the best. <laughs> and. I kind of had it on my finger and got it in my mouth and I tasted it and I liked it. So I just look it. <laughs> I would put a dab on my finger and look it. <laughs> but I, ha I did it when no one would look at me. Like I would do it and then hold it under my desk and then look around and... <laughs> and then the chalk, I don't know, it, it's kind of got a weird dry texture to it. That was what was fascinating to me, the way it kind of made my mouth feel dry. So I would cuff my mouth around it like that just and hold it. I didn't really eat it, like swallow it. I mean, I've tried a little bit of it, but it's not very pleasant. I just like to put it in my mouth because it's like at a dry. Of course, I ate my boogers. <laughs> I used to want buckets and buckets of those. <laughs> I just got really nervous. <laughs> the interesting things that I've eaten, is it eaten or eaten? Eaten in my lifetime has to be squirrel brains. We used to eat those for breakfast. That was my grandfather's favorite <laughs> dish. <laughs> Uh, they would go and, I guess, hunt for a bunch of these squirrels to get a full breakfast out of it because I guess they're, you know, how they're tiny. I couldn't have been no more than seven or eight because that, we used to go over there all the time and 
I kind of remember, you know, growing up, because they, they used to have a wonderland of junk we used to play with. Uh, My grandmother's niece, they lived in a very old house that didn't even have a hard floor, it just was dirt. So they would bring these live rabbits into their house because we would eat the stew. And they would, they had like these two um, strings, like uh, rope, and they had it in a nice slip knot, perfect for these rabbit's feet. And they would hang them upside down while they're still kicking and jumping. They'd gut them, like cut them right in the abdomen and still alive, you know, their hearts would be beating and they would just gut them right there in front of us, you know, and then skin the, just pull the skin down, just like, whoosh. I mean, you would literally hear it tearing from the muscle, just, just a, it's an indescribable sound. Not a pleasant sound to hear when you're a child. <laughs> then all you would see is just this naked looking corpse. It went from a big fluffy rabbit to a tiny little skinny naked looking <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> and then that's when they would take it out and wash it and throw it in a pot and make like a stew. It's the same process as in, I believe, as in they kill it and then they, but besides skinning the squirrel, I'm not sure if they ate the meat. I'm pretty sure they didn't because they, she never mentioned that. But they would just decapitate the, the squirrel because they just wanted the brain of it. My grandfather just wanted to eat the brain of it. So I'm guessing they would cut the head off, cut the head meat enough to expose the skull, and then the, sc the skull can't be no bigger than like this big or so, it can't be very big. So I'm guessing she either took a knife and cracked it open like that and then put it in with the eggs, or she smashed it with a hammer or she smashed it with something. And then she mixed it in with the brain. I mean, the, she would scramble up the brain. She told me she used to scramble the brain and stick it in with the eggs like scrambled eggs and do it that way and then throw it in the fry pan. It would be mixed in with the egg. It wouldn't just be a little brain. <laughs> what you're imagining like a little brain <laughs> just sitting on a fry pan? No, I don't. It's not like that. It's like a, I'm guessing it was like a grayish matter all smashed up and then mixed in with the eggs. And when it got, I'm guessing when it was cooked, it turned white or something. I, I was like three years old. Oh, um, it's not food per se, but I did eat it. <laughs> My brother, I have two cousins that we lived on the same road. And one of them's my age and his brother's uh, a year or so older. So the younger one would play with me and the older one would play with my brother. And they, we used to get these little brown bags from the corner store, which was like two miles. So I guess it's not really the corner store because we would get to fill them up with dollar, I mean, uh, penny bubble gums. So I used to, we just liked to collect the bags because they were so tiny. And my brother and my cousin, I guess, snuck out and filled up uh, the bag full of uh, goat poop. So they're acting like they're chewing on it. Mm. He said, do you want some Arabian roasted peanuts to me and my cousin? So we was, I don't know how old we were. We was under 10. Stupidly thinking that they were actually chewing on these peanuts me and my cousin put them in our mouth and start chewing on them. I'm like, this don't taste like a peanut. And I remember I was like, I spit it out. I didn't trust him anyway because I knew my brother lied. But I thought that he ate it. Gross as you would think it is. But it just, just because, you know, they ate corn and grass and things like that. So it's not like it's, you know horrible, horrible, you know, really stinky, <laughs> like you're thinking poop, but I just remember it not tasting right. It just didn't taste like a peanut. <laughs>
I remember my older brother, of course my older brother again, <laughs> he would say, uh, if you eat worms, if you eat it in your diet, like they're pretty, they're pretty healthy for you. They got a lot of nutrition and la la la. And I stupidly believed him. I don't remember what it tasted like. I just remember the soft, squishy, chewy. <laughs> it's almost like it, it sticks in your teeth and <laughs> like bubble gum. <laughs> My brother used to get me to eat a lot of weird stuff and I used to believe him. And this is coming from someone who used to take a glass jar. It was actually a shape of a snowman. Our great great grandmother gave it to us. She was still alive. And it had candy in it. So when you emptied it, it became like a little collector jar. And it had a cork. So he would this is coming from someone who would take that jar and fart into the jar and cork it really fast and keep it on his bookshelf and we would watch this thing for months and it actually turned the glass green and then one day I don't even know how long we even let it fester in this jar I mean the whole side of the jar just turned putrid green so he had this bright idea again let's open the jar and smell it <laughs> so I was like, okay, <laughs> listening to my brother. Um, and we opened it up, and it was so powerful. It, it literally knocked us down. I don't know why. <laughs> he just comes up with these crazy and sick ideas, and I stupidly went with it. <laughs> he had diarrhea, and he, he didn't know that if you drunk a lot, a lot of water that would make it worse. But he used to drink gallons of water. And I don't know how he come about finding out that he can shoot his diarrhea from one end of the, our house to the other. We, we would all sit on the porch, stand on our porch. It was like a big, long porch my dad built. And of course, I would just stand away because I didn't want to be squirted. But it was me and my two cousins. We would literally just stand there and watch him. He would pull his pants down, squeeze really hard, and his diary would squirt in a fine line. I'm not joking from where he was at the end to the end of the house. I don't even know how many feet that is. It was so far that we was just so impressed with him shooting his diarrhea out. You know, what next thing is my brother going to do? <laughs> it was okay, because it was my brother. <laughs>